the thread.php script in this website is the longer script and so I'm not going to type it all out because if I did then this movie would be horrifically long so instead I'm just going to walk you through what each part of the script does to begin with we start the session and use the forum.inc script that contains the common functions that we use throughout this website then it tests to see if the user is logged in if they're not then it fails them with uh, the serious argument set to true which therefore will bounce the user all the way back to the entrance page if however somehow the thread ID has not been specified then the user is only bounced back to the main page which lists all the threads that we saw in our last movie if the thread has been specified then we need to register it we're going to set arbitrary figure post per page equals 10 and then we're going to set the post list offset to 1 if it hasn't been set yet this works in a very similar way to the way it does on the main page where we're keeping track of if there are more for instance more posts than can fit on the one page then we're keeping track of which part of the entire thread we're viewing we need to register that with our session object next we need to make a database connection using the function defined in the forum.inc file and then we're going to query our database using this rather formidable piece of SQL it's actually quite simple there's nothing really complicated about this it's just a little long it takes from three different tables and it selects the name of the thread the body of the particular post that we're going to show uh, the date on which that was posted the name of the user the user's email how many posts the user has made to date and the field in the database that shows whether or not the user wants has their email shown and we also need the unique ID of the post and the user we're going to take it from these three tables and the join is going to simply be that the thread ID in posts is the same as in threads so we're getting the name of the thread for specific post that we're calling and also that the data from the user table is the correct data according to who made that post originally the other criterion is that the thread is the thread that where as the user are interested in viewing and we're going to order them by post date posted ascending so that the oldest post comes first and that the thread can be viewed in the intuitive way which is the beginning first so that it goes as you go down the page you can read the conversation in context we're going to limit the number of results to the um, number of posts per page and we're going to start at the point at which we've arrived if we've indeed have navigated from one set of posts to the next within this page if anything goes wrong with that we need to bounce the user back to the main page with a relevant error message if 
no rows are returned by this query, then we can presume that somehow the the post list offset variable has got mixed up and that we're trying to call a post that doesn't exist. So we give an error message to that effect and bounce the user back to the main page. And then we need to pull out the results into a number of records with a while loop. And then this little um, condition here with the setup page in it, this the reason we're doing this is that we need to set up the page using the name of the thread as the header for the page. So until we've actually pulled the first row using MySQL fetch associated array, we can't actually set up the page. Otherwise we just put it straight before the loop. But we're doing this within the loop so that we're able to have access to that data. But we only want to do it once. So we're going to check for this variable, is set up variable, which has been defined as global within our include file. So then it will only execute on the first um, iteration of the while loop. If we have a look in our, at one of the threads, then as we can see, the thread title is shown here, which is what we're doing with that piece of our PHP script. This part here, which shows the links and the username and the user status, which is user rather than moderator, is what we're doing with this line here. The main part of this loop is the is to show the details of the user and the piece of text itself that they've posted. So if we have a look here, as we can see the user name is posted here, and then we have the date, and then how many posts the user has posted. The reason why this shows zero, I should explain, is that this post was added at an earlier point in the testing process at which I hadn't added a facility to increase the number of posts. Now that the whole system works, every user should show posts, if simply for the fact that they've posted once. So we should never see this with any new users that you add. And here is the text of the post. Then we have a line b below each post here. As we can see, each of these rows fulfills each of those pieces of data and puts it on the screen. We also have this line, which we're not seeing at the moment. And what that is, is the facility for the user to edit their own post so that if they either if they're the user either if where we were logged in as say Mr. X then we would see the edit post hyperlink coming up here where we could edit this particular post here and change it to whatever we want or delete it since we're not logged in as Mr. X, we're logged in as this random series of letters. We're not being shown this. We would also be shown this particular piece of information if we were a moderator. And here's the condition that specifies that. If the particular user ID that has been passed back from the SQL query is the user ID that's been registered with this as a session variable, then we get to see this edit post or if we're logged as a moderator. So that's where the condition is located. We store the body text on the page 
within these two functions, strip slashes. Now this takes out any slashes that were added to escape dodgy characters such as apostrophes that would have thrown, up, thrown out our SQL syntax. And so these are taken out again when we come to output the data onto the screen. And we use nl2br. And what this little function does, very useful, is to convert all new lines, nl, to br, which is HTML page breaks. I beg your pardon, line breaks. So that they will be correctly formatted when passed as HTML. Finally, there's that line at the bottom there. This end part of the thread.php script does a very similar thing to what it did in the main page. Let's have a look at what it's doing here on this page. And that is it's storing, it's showing the numbers here. And since we don't have enough posts, we're not seeing the little arrows either side of the numbers which show what posts we're viewing at the moment. We also have these two hyperlinks, add reply and new thread. And both of these lead to the post.php script, except that one of them includes the new thread equals true variable along with the URL. In our next movie, we're going to examine the way post.php works.